I had an experience about 10 years ago. I uh, was sleeping and I woke up one day and I was levitating off the bed. I look over to my left and there was a little gray man. He said, we want to take you to our ship. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm Patriot Pete. Make sure you hit that like button or that subscribe button wherever you're watching this at. But let's get right down to it. Let's talk about what everyone is talking about right now. It's a big hot button. And you know what it is. UFOs? Nope. What they're banning from schools? Nope. Uh, It's the hottest topic in the world right now. Drones and the turkeys? Nope. The Mexican pizza is back at Taco Bell. You never had Mexican pizza? No, Oh, we should have had... We yeah. should have had that brought in. Some yeah. producer uh, you are. No, I'm going to get my assistant to... Oh, you know, yeah, perfect. That, that's yeah. great. How, how do they make a pizza, man? It's just how the Mexicans make mm-hmm. it. What do you mean? You know, you put uh, meat, the cheese, and tortilla. Mexican pizza. That's a taco, man. No, 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 no. You put a tortilla down. Yeah. Fry it. Okay. Cheese, meat. You can throw some vegetables on there if you want. If you want that. I don't like the extra calories. Mm-hmm. Mexican pizza. So you Just like it. they make in Mexico. If God has blessed you enough... To have a Taco Bell in your neighborhood, go there right now today, get you a Mexican pizza from Taco Bell. Mm. I went down to uh, Cozumel one year, and they had a little uh, Taco Bell in the airport, and that's when I first had the Mexican pizza, and I said, this is this is it. This is real a Mexican cu- cuisine right here. And then when I got back to the United States a couple years later, they had the Mexican pizza there, and I said, I, I told everybody about it. If you've never been to Mexico, this is it. This is their prized possession right here. Mexican pizza. Mexican pizza at Taco Bell. And, and we're lucky enough as Americans to be able to have that almost any time we want for a, you know $3.99 or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It's the best $3.99 you'll ever spend. I want to congratulate all the pilots that have probably been sitting on their thumbs for the past couple of years looking for action, real action, and then they went out and been able to shot them UFOs down. I want to tell you something else. You know we never got these UFOs. We weren't seeing all these UFOs all over the world until when? Uh, atomic bomb? Nope. When we got cell phones? Getting closer. 5G. I was about to say that. The moment 5G came around, everything changed. All of a sudden, we're seeing stuff in the sky. Why do you think that is? Is it because it's uh, the signal scrambles our brains? No. You ever seen that movie Star Trek? No. Uh, which one? One of the movies. Oh. Where they go up into space, the humans figured out how to do warp drive. Okay. I think that's what they call it. The aliens sensed that the humans were able to do warp drive, and they said, all right, now they're ready to know what's going on out here. And that's what's happening now. It all makes sense. Once 5G took over, the aliens saw that we had 5G and are now sending probes out until it's time to make them known to us. Mm. I'm not making that up. You can look it up. There was no UFO sightings ever until 5G came around. That's a fact, Jack. What do you think about the satellite that was shot down over South Carolina? The balloon. I think they waited too long to shoot that down, to be honest with you. Do you think it was from China? I do think it was China, yeah. All right. Absolutely. I think that whole thing is a distraction. You know, when I brought up Mars, yeah. I'm talking about the candy. Okay. Oh. You know, when Elon Musk keeps saying, hey, we're going to go to Mars, he ain't talking about the planet. He ain't talking about the planet. He's talking about the candy factory? He's talking about the candy factory. What's the candy factory? Because I brought this up once before, I'm going to say it again. When Mars Candy took away the Snickers bar, the king-size Snickers bar, I I, I was this big. I ain't lying. When they got rid of that, they said, hey, we're going to make this king-size shareable now. So they still got the king-size, but now it's two small pieces in a bag. And now China's stronger. Russia's stronger. Iran is stronger. Because we can't even get our act together to bring out the king size anymore. We're just two small pieces in the bag. And so when Elon Musk is saying, let's go to Mars, we're talking about Mars candy to reunite America. One solid bar. One so solid bar. Two pieces so in a bag. Absolutely. Now you. you're getting it. I got you. Now you're I'm, getting I'm it. Right there with you. This is America, right? Didn't we fight for our independence from a king? You sleep on a king size mattress? Well, queen size, actually. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sleep on a king size mattress. Okay. Okay. Because we're not talking about the, the 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 monarchy. We're talking about a size. If I sold you a king size mattress and it was just two tiny little mattresses that you're supposed to put together or share with a friend, you would throw that mattress right back in my face. You would throw it right back in my face because it's not right. And what Mars Candy's doing is very un American. I would even say it's treasonous. Be real honest with you. What do you, if you think, like, you got to take a craft to get the Mars? What do you think about craft then? Cheese? You're talking about yeah. the cheese? Yeah. 
<laughs> what about them? I have, no we prob- I have no problem with that. You know why? Why? Kraft cheese makes American cheese. I mean, how much more can you love America? You need a product after us. American cheese isn't really cheese. If you go grab a uh, Christmas tree and it's fake versus you go cut it down yourself, is that making any less of a Christmas tree? See what I'm saying? Yeah. You got you there, Chuck. I want to thank the supporter of this particular episode, G Shield. Talking about tinfoil, dude? No, this is G Shield. This shields all the harmful waves of 5G, 4G, and 3G. I've never seen anything like this before. I use this every single day. It's a very heavy shielding that you can use for almost anything. I've made a chastity belt out of this. Before I leave the house every single day, I wear this because I don't want none of that 5G rays in my nether regions. Ah, It's bendable. You can fold around. I use it on my iPhone case. Use promo code PATRIOTPEAT when you check out at G-Shield. And uh, thank you so much for supporting this episode and supporting America while you're doing so. Now let's do the mailbag segment. Okay, Pete, you've been getting a lot of mail in here, but there's one that stands out to me. It's coming from R. Uh, He says, hey, boss. I recently just lost my job and I have rent coming up. What do you think I should do? Oh, that's easy. If I had to start over again today with zero dollars in my bank account, I'd get in my truck, I'd drive around my neighborhood, and I'd look for packages that were left on other people's doorsteps. And I'd get those packages so no one else steals them. Wait, you're taking packages off people's doorsteps? I'm like a vigilante. I'm like Batman. Wait a minute. So you're just taking them off the doorstep? How do they know that you're not stealing them? I'm not stealing them. I'm just taking them to my house. They come to my house later on, and they say, hey, uh, did you get my package? I say, yeah. They pay me the five ten dollars $10 to watch their package. I'm basically mm. package sitting. So what, mm. if, what if they don't find you? Do you, leave, do, you leave, do you leave them a note? Oh, I don't leave them a note because then the, the burglar's going to know. Right. The package, the so pork, you're holding the the pork pirate's going to know where it's at. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're protecting it from So you're pirate. just trying to get there before the porch pirate. Right. That's what's okay. happening. Yeah. If they don't collect it within 14 days, by law, I'm able to flip whatever's in there on eBay. So what happens if you're going to protect the package and someone's walking out of the house and they're getting the package? I'll just say, hey, it's over at my place. But I'm right there in front of you. With, yeah, with yeah, I'm walking out. I'm walking out. I'm like, hey, it'll be over <laughs> at my place when you need it. Well, what if they were just like, I'll just take it now? I already have it. Possession two tenths of law, baby. Do they have any idea that you're that you're doing this service for them, or you just con- you say, hey, there's a package. I'm gonna it's go. It's part of our neighborhood out. service packet. That I put it anytime anybody news, moves into the neighborhood. I do a little Xerox flyer and I put it in on the windshield. Hey, if you're looking for your package, I got it. Patri- but if there's no car <laughs> home. If there's no car home, I, I usually just hang it up on a tree or the mailbox. Okay. I don't go into the mailbox. That's illegal. Oh, but- You don't want to tamper with Yeah, them. but taking their but taking their packages. Watching, their, pa- watching their packages. I got it. So you're, you're just watching their packages. Yeah. So you're just a package babysitter. That's all it Do is. Do you ever open the package? I never open the package unless it's over the 14-day mark. After 14 days, I get to open whatever What's I want. What's the most valuable thing that you've watched for somebody that you oh, secure? that you someone? end up getting to keep mm-hmm. for after the 14th day. Uh, well, Christmas was a good time for me. <laughs> I imagine. Uh, we ended up getting, I say we because I had my uh, brother help me with that. Because there's a lot of packages at Christmas time. What's your brother's help. name? I don't talk about my brother. Well, okay. This so is what? a show. This isn't what this show is about. Oh, I'm not trying to get super personal in my life. Am I asking you what your siblings' names are? Mm-hmm. No, no. Then you don't, I just about, to you know, don't ask about mine. I just want to know if like, maybe- I don't, I don't, I've already told you, I don't talk about my daddy. I don't talk about dancing. Mm-hmm. And I don't talk about my brother. DDB. Mm. I don't talk about those things. Double DB, huh? Yep. Okay. So I'll, I'll have to remember that for next yeah. time. Write that down so he doesn't forget. Yeah. DDB. 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 Uh, well, I, now I'm all flustered. I don't remember where I was at. So we take my brother and I. We go and take the uh, the packages, and after 14 days, we take them out. The best thing I think I found on there, I found an iPod. Mm. Uh, I found some trading cards. Nice. Uh, PC. I, it was a little uh, Apple book. And uh, and then, you know, we flipped that on eBay, and uh, it's great. It's been a great business for it. It's a good side hustle. I recommend it to anybody just get started out. So going back to the UFOs, yeah, what are these UFOs? I heard they're used car lot balloons. You know what? That ain't far from the truth. I had an experience about 10 years ago. I don't know if I ever talked about this, where I uh, was sleeping and I woke up one day and I was levitating off the bed and uh, I look over to my left and there was a little gray man. I don't know if they prefer that term or what, but he said, we want to take you to our ship. We've been watching you. We see that, uh, you know, you've got some special insights that not a lot of these people have, and 
we want to study you. You know, he didn't say it like that. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But so we got back up to his ship and I said, it was like one of them used car salesman balloons, like the little green guys that float around. He said, yes, because that's our propulsion system. Uh-huh. That's how we're able to move around. It's kind of squid-like. It's kind of squid-like. I said, man, I, I, I never would have thought. I never would have thought. So I was up there for about three days and then came back down. And uh, real nice guys. I mean, real nice guys. What'd you end up doing for three days, man? Well, you know, we had they, they just kind of examined me and and uh, asked questions and stuff like that. Did some tests, you know, kind of see uh, like brain tests, teasers, things like that. And then uh, I woke up uh, three days later. I was back in my bed, almost like it never happened. Did you have names for them? Z Rock was one of them. Mm. He was the main guy I spoke with, and a really nice guy, really gentle. Real gentle. Gentle? What do you mean? They just, you know, had a gentle soul, <laughs> you know? I don't know. I feel like there's, there's more to the story than than what you're you're telling. There's nothing else to say. Your body language kind of like... What do you mean? There's no other... In the, nothing else happened. Mm-hmm. Z-Rock and I, I mean, I haven't seen him in 10 years, but uh, I'll always remember him. I'll always remember See? Him. Stuff like that. You say, like, there's more to the story. If you got pulled up into a spaceship, you don't think you're going to remember that guy? Huh? Yeah, I remember him. I'm just saying, get ready for the UFOs. Get ready for the aliens. You're about to see some stuff you've never seen before. Some of us had already seen it. And just go with it. Just go with it. I no. mean, they're sending us the warning signs. All these balloons and all this stuff. I mean, it's all part of it, dude. All part of it. Now, if you had to rate the UFO ride, like an Uber ride, um, oh. was, it, was it like one star, five stars? I would say five stars because I'd never been on one before. Oh, okay. You know? Uh... Yeah, I, I I would say I would say five stars. Was there food on this flight? Because no. I mean, obviously, it's no. longer than a. No, it was real quick. Blink of an eye. Oh, okay. Blink of an eye. Well, guys, that's our show for today. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you smash that like button, that subscribe button. I just want to tell everyone, all the boys watching. You know, I know Andrew Tate. At least as far as I know, they still got him locked up, and he's been telling you to get a Bugatti. To make you a man, you got to get a Bugatti to make you uh, feel good about yourself. I'm here to tell you, you don't need a Bugatti. You don't need a Bugatti. I've been driving the same Toyota for 20 years. I'm surprised you drive a Japanese car. Well, it was my ex-wife's. Ah. And so I was, uh, keep it to remind me of her. But uh, I didn't want to talk about her. No, I don't talk about her. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just making sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's DDBW. It's not the car that makes the man is the man that makes the call. Get out of the boat.